Item number one. All right, so what you're going to hear today, mostly it's just updates. Mm -hmm. Just give the, the committee an idea where we're at on these items. And the last item, number five, it's really a request for clarification. So, Director Hernandez, it's an issue that you brought up, and I want to make sure that Craig was aware of it, too. So, that's why we have the uh, exhibit on the, on the screen. So, with that, I'm going to turn it over to, J uh, to James to do the, uh, the updates on the first four. Okay, uh, Director Hernandez, so the men's locker room update from the last meeting, we went back to with the new direction of uh, making it a smaller men's locker room, keeping the women's locker room unchanged, cutting down the price. We've been in negotiation with Jeff Katz and Associates. He sent a, uh, a um, amendment request for about $27,000. Mm -hmm. um, but 12000 is his, but 15000 of it is his subs. So we looked at his numbers and we agree with his numbers. There's 43 sheets of the sheet set that need to be altered in some way. Okay. So we agree with his level of effort. We feel his subs are high. He doesn't disagree. He's having tr and he's in the middle of trying to hammer down his subs. Uh, we're shooting for a number close to eighteen thousand, but mm -hmm. we think realistically it'll probably come in closer to twenty-one, uh, just based on what his subs are, are putting in. Now, even though this amendment's a little higher than anticipated, some of that sub money was going to be spent on the HVAC design and the uh, fire sprinkler extension design that we we're going to do. Uh, with third-party vendor anyway, mm -hmm. so some of the, so instead of spending it there, we're spending it here. Uh, we're hoping by the end of this week to get the final amendment. Uh, at that point, um, we can move forward uh, without going to the board with that amendment unless there is uh, a request or a reason from the engineer committee to bring that forward or from the GM. But it's within the budget amounts. It's within the amounts that we did previously discuss. So mm -hmm. unless there's a, a concern or a reason, uh, then we can move forward with that, assuming that we can move forward by the end of this week with an um, approval of the amendment. Uh, we're looking at about two to three months of work, uh, and we're looking at starting in January construction, roughly. So with that, happy to answer any questions uh, or uh, take direction if there's a different direction than what I discussed there? Um, the, you might, and I'm sure he knows this, but you might pass along that, that, that the sprinkler design traditionally is um, a deferred approval once you get your sprinkler subcontractor on board. Yeah, he, he just didn't have a subcontractor on board. So. Oh. So, because well, we were no, taking care of that in-house. Uh, the construction subcontractor. I mean, we're doing the fire, uh, shooting range right now and our sprinkler subcontractor he's has within his bid the design of the sprinkler system so uh, that might ease him along and reducing the price down to what I mean the 21,000 is probably a reasonable price okay um, and the two to three months to do the work that's what going back and forth there. There's 43 sheets that need to be adjusted. So it may be less. Well, yeah. That's our staff's estimation. Oh, okay. We haven't got a schedule from him yet. Yeah, because, I mean, really, I mean, half of that is probably the more appropriate time frame, mm -hmm. on my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. The so. majority of the sub cost really is the HVAC and the structure. Yeah. What's the estimated construction schedule? How long? Um, the previous construction schedule, I'm assuming it's about the same, was about uh, three or four months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's about right. So we'll be looking at maybe May-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's probably right. Okay. Uh-huh. I, well, I don't see any need. No, just refresh my memory. What's the new construction estimate? Uh, I don't remember that off the top. I could get back to you on it, but it, it was... It was eight. Now I think we're down to about four. Four and change, yeah. Because okay. it's, it's yeah. Yeah, much, much better. Because we're not doing any of the women's locker room or, or modifying the men's locker room at all and making a smaller footprint locker yeah. Smaller footprint locker room. Keeping the <coughs> mm -hmm. And without the tilt-up, it's just going to be stud and stucco. Yeah, so, and, right. and, and the tilt-up was the biggest uh, yeah, the right. biggest obstacle because mm -hmm. that uh, tilt-up that small, the lot of the guys couldn't get somebody to bid it um, and give a competitive price on it. Yeah, that was real difficult. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll move forward with the amendment, assuming it's around the price range that we expect. We'll confer with the general manager and authorize it move forward. If there's something different, uh, I'll leave it up to the general manager to decide what to do next. Okay. Yeah, because tell them if it doesn't work, we're just going to send it out for design build and start over, be done, be with, done with them, and yeah. have yeah. it done in half. The I'm time. sure he doesn't want that either. No, I'm sure he does. But I was going to ask, the plans are yours, aren't they? I mean, yeah, they I mean, Municipalities, yeah, agencies, own you own them. Yep, yeah. we own the plans. So we'll, okay. we have the plans. Yeah. No, matter what. no I, it, it, I just. Okay. Second item. Item number two. Okay. Okay. The uh, solar uh, request for proposal update. So we're basically done with the uh, request for proposal. General Manager Prum has actually uh, provided his final comments, and we. Uh, Discussed them last week and did some clarification. There's a few items that I'm going to need to just uh, address in his comments uh, to finalize, and we'll be ready to send this out to the street by the end of the month. Now, is this RFP to a firm to do the RFP for the solar, or is this to the solar companies? No, no this is the RFP to get a, a consultant on board to actually do the study to say this is the best deal for us. So at that point, we're going to go out to the, to the solar developers who develop the project with a, it's kind of a design build process. Right. right? So since we don't have expertise in house, this we're hiring a consultant to be our expert. Perfect. And then negotiate the contracts for us. And if we do mm -hmm. power purchase agreements or we do a, a no risk power purchase agreement or something, they'll make sure that we're getting our fair share from that con from the developer of the actual photovoltaic system. And um, the consultant that ultimately will come out of this RFP is going to do the design, did I hear you say that? They'll do a design up to a 30% level, so this way when we send it out to bid, uh, the solar companies who actually build the projects yeah. all are bidding apples to apples. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then each one might have a little different twist, but we'll have an expert on board to evaluate that twist to okay. make sure it, it's appropriate for us. And what I heard, the consultant, whoever this is, mm -hmm. is then not going to be him or his firm is not going to be able to participate in they're the ultimate. They're precluded from precluded. bidding on yeah. actual construction. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're our representatives. Yeah. Right? Okay. Which makes it a little bit challenging because in addition to James finalizing the RFP, we're also developing a list of consultants to send this to. Mm -hmm. and we're trying to separate out. You know, a lot of them may say, we're not interested because we want the back. Yeah, exactly. Build the darn yeah. Thing. So we're trying not to waste time and trying just to identify the ones that are more just design owner reps yeah. as mm -hmm. opposed to mm -hmm. contractors. But uh, even the train that uh, uh, Glenn and I went to just last week, one of the first things that uh, uh, they were saying when it comes to water and power is get a consultant on board that could be your advisor who has expertise in this because there's so many different options and angles and, and the person who's developing the project can say, this contract's great, this will pay back in three, four, five years. You really need somebody who understands all yeah. the ins and outs. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Yes. You, you get the people from the companies that are going well, to say this is the well, best. Well, and not only that, that, but you know, you can manipulate the design to right. help that's what, you, yeah. you know, that's what I mean. yeah. direct it towards your organization. Exactly. And that's why the preclusion is really beneficial. So right. if you this get, battery system is great, and we just happen to be selling it. Yeah, yeah exactly. And do you have a list of consultants yet? We're generating. I know uh, uh, Tierra Verde is in interested in that. They've expressed uh, interest in it. I know I've talked to Optera at one point. They're more interested in developing it um, and not being the in-house consultant. We've used uh, Don King in the past for energy consultant and I don't know if he'd be interested. I'm going to reach out to him. You know, Dr. House is I was just going to say I'd recommend uh, yeah. uh, talking to him. Yeah, and I've he talked with. He usually uh, gets involved in these kind of yep. things. Really, he, he ended up being a prime or a sub. He, you know. he, yeah. yeah, that's my understanding. Is he he ended up being a sub to a lot of these companies, not doing the whole. He doesn't do the whole thing, but he'll he'd be the sub for the energy rate model. Yeah, he's the economist yep. portion. Yeah. Of the thing. yeah, and I talked with Scott Golden, of RMC. Is it Gold yeah. Golden? Yeah. Golden, yeah. 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 And uh, I told him that you know it's coming up, so keep yeah. an eye on it. I don't know if their firm has that. Capability or not, but yeah, I talked to Scott. They don't do this for oh, okay. so all right. Well, then, so yeah, James referenced the uh, session we went to last week. It was uh, Jamie, I forget her last name, but she's with Optera, Optera. yeah, yeah, and uh, Kelly Rogers from the uh, County Water Authority and Gary Arant. 
So oh. um, Jamie kind of moderated it, and then Kelly and Gary gave their perspective from a kind of a large wholesaler mm -hmm. and a retail water agency, both in their experience with power, mostly solar yeah. projects. So it was, it was very interesting and kind of reaffirming in the direction we were planning on going. Saying, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, we feel that people with those that experience, this is a way you should go. Yeah, I mean. And I want to meet with, um, I'll probably ask James to join me to go meet with Kelly uh, because the Water Authority has done one project and is in the process of doing another project up at their facility up at the, by Twin Oaks, which is adjacent to our Twin Oaks facility. So there may be some economies of scale if we, oh, did, yeah. if we did a project up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure I understand what their project was and if there's some synergy between the two projects. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. 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 Might be some opportunities. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So in the RFP, are we still asking them to... Or are we still telling them these are all the facilities we have yes. and come up with kind of the best mix? It, it's a blank slate. Yeah. Yeah. It's like here's here's our facilities. Here's our we'll give them access to all of our power demand, all of our meter readings, and all they can of, all the real estate we own. Yep. And oh, we, great. And then we have a 2010 or 2011 energy management study that was done by Don King huh. and SCGD. So we're going to give them that, which gives them the baseline uh, historical records. Plus, they'll have the most recent information. Great. Great. All that and. Um, you say the R. Did I hear you say the RFP is probably going out next week? By the end of the month. End of the month. End of the month. End of the month. Yeah. Of the month. Give me a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So water. Uh, so I have the draft of the RFP completed. I'm actually in the middle of reviewing the draft. Probably this week. Uh, there is a little bit of discussion direction. Uh, as uh, the committee may recall, we kind of discussed a little bit about how we want to proceed with the groundwater RFP. Because uh, um, looking at the scope that I got from Lynn, I'm talking to now uh, two firms uh, about it, obviously Geoscience and another firm. Uh, you're looking at half a million dollars worth of effort uh, easily. Uh, and the main reason is now that so these, these firms kind of know that this RFP is looming, uh -huh. they're already doing some research, and there is not a lot of research to do. So they have to create a lot of information, uh, which is quite pricey. Um, at the last meeting, that, that the discussion that we had, uh, there was discussion of, well, maybe separating this thing out. The data acquisition portion, that doesn't give you anything but data acquisition, you're still talking a significant amount. It's not a fifty thousand dollar effort. It's not. It's you know well over a hundred thousand dollar effort, because that's the main work, uh, the data acquisition, putting the data together, analyzing it. That's probably fifty, sixty thousand dollars after you get. You know, it's probably more actually, but it, it's. That's not the significant lion's share of the actual labor hours. The labor hours it will be creating the work, uh, creating the data and finding the data. Um, so with that, I have a full RFP drafted at this point, uh, and and well, as from a district standpoint, I have some concerns sending it out without knowing uh, what direction the board wants as far as bringing it back. Because if if we bring back something that's five six hundred thousand dollars and you know it's a no go no matter what, I hate to put go yeah. through both the staff and the consultant effort. Yeah, that's a yeah. Is yeah. there a way to break that to in the RFP to break that down into smaller chunks? Well, that's what I'm, I'm talking about. So yeah. to create the information, you're going to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars at least. But right. you're not going to get any data. You're not. That, you know, that's just raw data. Yeah, that's just to get it, and it's going to take time. Yeah, it's going to take time. Uh, it, you know, both consultants have said it's doable. There's information out there. There's some number now whether. Uh, that doesn't even include the law portion of it, which uh, or the legal portion of it, which is you know how many straws are into the cup already, uh, and how much can they take out, and what rights do they have over the rights that we would have, and how do you, you know, in going about ensuring that you maintain your rights, and obviously uh, becoming a basin master and those different options. It, this is just looking at the basin. Figuring out what the Q in and Q out of the basin is, figuring out what that basin can hold, and that's a half a million dollars plus effort. The next step, which is what Livenheim is doing, that was step one. For Livenheim, there was like 600 and change effort. I got their scope uh, from Geoscience. I had uh, Livenheim send it to me. 
uh, and then the next step is, I forgot how much it was, but significantly more, is now where do we, where, how do we get the water out of the basin? So, so, and then the final step for Lindenheim, if they move forward, will be the, the legal portion, you know, becoming the basin master. So you know, that's, it's a several year thing, and I just want to ensure that if we, it's, from an engineering standpoint, it's very exciting. Uh, but I want to make sure that I have clear direction of what the board and the committee is looking for to move forward with it. Because, you know, if we're looking forward to kind of a five year plus rollout and spending two, three million dollars to figure out how much water we get out of this basin and start going down the legal proceedings of, of whichever legal proceedings we go through to ensure that we get the water out of the basin, that's great. But is that what we're talking about now? Right, and I initially, and whether it's being taken away by just the initial amount, that's more I'm wondering if out of that half a million dollars, mm -hmm. if there is an incremental step within that that could be broken out and so that, you know, it's a it's 100 or 150, yeah. 200 so the table, to begin with. So we've done tabletop stuff twice now. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's thirty thousand dollars plus. The master plan uh, that is being drafted has a tabletop version of the groundwater. And it doesn't tell you enough. It yeah. is what, it's basically what it comes down to. So we know that, you know, for twenty, thirty thousand dollars, they can look at weld records. They can look at the tabletop studies. They can look at the Todd engineering study. Um, they can look at some of the other information, uh, the basin plans, the basin, the basin jurisdiction, or uh, and and. Well, saying those things incorrectly, but they can look at basically the tabletop studies and pull them together and what we end up getting is, well, there's not enough known about the basin to really know much, but we think it's got one to two MGD worth of value. And that's what, that's what RMC did too. Yeah, so right. RMC did that, um, um, Black and Beach has done that now. Uh, so we've had two firms do that in the last year. Uh, so we know that that's that level of effort. Uh, the next level of effort is to create data, uh, is really what I've been told. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, is that like sinking wells, production testing? Yeah, and getting more deeper into you know, existing groundwater wells and existing history, pulling more county records. Uh, you know, there's more data out there that you just have to dig deeper on, uh, and that's the next level. And, but is that all, also, as Glenn has mentioned, digging wells to test our own information? Or is that just going around to the existing wells, getting permission to look at their water, how much they pump, what their quality is, and that? It, it's both, because they, they, okay. the way, and and um, and forgive me, because I'm not a, I, I don't work in groundwater, yeah, right. so it's not my expertise. But the way it's been explained to me is, if we're lucky and there's existing wells and we have access to those existing wells, that's going to give you data to, to figure out where the... Uh, I want to say it's almost like topography, the depth and the and the width and all that stuff the basin is, you, you probably need additional information. Um, and that additional information would be gathered by dr drilling our own wells. Yeah. Or and, holes. Yeah, and it, it basically tests with small ones. Yeah. But, and then the way, the way they also say is you need to understand, you know, obviously they need to know soil types, they need to know drawdown, they need to know how it affects. And, and those things take some time. Right. No, th so. th that that's the explanation that needs to be given because uh, I, I just did this with the soils report mm -hmm. over here on P Mountain, and the guy said, you know, it's going to be fifteen thousand dollars. I went, what the hell? And I scoop some soil, do some samples, and done. No, they got a, They actually had to drill mm -hmm. a dozen holes, test them, and then blow a couple of them up. And they were out there for a week. Well, when he explained it to me, then I went, oh, no, there's some real work here, not just gathering some dirt. So I think the explanation of what that effort is going to be is going to be helpful to the board to know, okay, we can't just be a little bit pregnant here. If we're going to be stepping into this, this is a long-term project that's going to be expensive. And one of the items I hope that's in the RFP is a funding source because one of that data gathering I would hope would be well you know there's some grants out there that you could be going after and that sort of thing yeah 
absolutely Jesus. The, the way I've written the RFP is is so they can we go after grant or loan money uh, more grant money if, if, if it's available so the way you do the feasibility study is for grant. I don't know the grants are out there but yeah. I kind of just generically put that in the RFP to say we'll need to get you know set this up for any type of grants and I'm lo hoping that the consultants could help me out with here's your opportunities so yeah I think that's one of the way this makes sense to spend yeah exactly but it, as, as if it's in a, a grant situation yeah and the other thing is is that you know with these reclaim project options regionally mm -hmm. it makes sense that you know this, well, it grants for recycled yeah. water. Right, and I guess that's the other question I had was, you know, the, the meeting we were at yeah, the other day, yeah. and they were talking about the possibilities. Would their studies ultimately do some of this work? So... I mean, they, they put, said the same thing. San Marcos has about two million gallons yeah. of storage. Which is, which they're all basically quoting the Todd Engineering story, yeah, okay. which, from, which we've all seen now. Uh, but basically, my take on it is if we were looking at partnering with Iwa to do some of this work, you know, they're looking for partners. To, yeah. To, not only partners to take the water, but to give some money. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. probably, to probably uh, probably pay for it. You know, mm -hmm. because, as you know, as you know, from that presentation, going to the raw water aqueduct was the number one option. Right. It happens to be within our basin. Right. But they kind of said, well, developing that basin is going to increase the price significantly. So mm -hmm. just going to the aqueduct is an option now. If Valcius is interested in developing that basin. You know, then all of a sudden now, okay, let's talk about that. I mean, they didn't say it that way, but that's the way I took it's it. It's kind of a chicken and an egg. Kind of <coughs> the water's here. Uh, yeah, and it, it, you know, it's interesting because in, in my mind, I've been rolling around. What kind of a partnership are they looking for, and would we be looking for as Valacitas? And uh, yes, we have a, a water basin. And yes, they would like to use it. And yes, they're going to be doing some work. And they want us to participate both economically and, and mm -hmm. taking some of that. So the question is, you're right. It's chicken the egg. Well, I'm wondering if it makes more sense to have a consultant pursue grant funding opportunities. Or come up with a scope that you know, can kind of turn into a, a grant application or something. Yeah, well, I, I put in a, a section in the RFP for grant funding opportunities, but it, it maybe make more sense to get the grant first and yeah. move forward. Mm -hmm. You usually need some type of feasibility study or something for a, at least a Prop 84 grant. You do. Right. Uh, and, and so one of the things that this could develop is the feasibility study, uh, but now you're, now you're changing direction. You're no longer actually evaluating the basin, you're doing a feasibility study. Now, we have a feasibility study uh, with the North County Recycled Water Group that touches on it, so it'd be, you know, expanding on that. Yeah, maybe enough to get the Some good grant chance work. of grant yeah. money. And I tell you, it's the only way it makes sense, because I don't think as a board we're willing to spend half a million dollars. No, I, no I, I wouldn't vote for that, and I'm the one that really wants it. Yeah. But, um, so, do we modify the RFP to make that the first focus, the it, grant study? It can be. You know, when I, I, I sat down and talked to, actually, I'm having, uh, I'm having a meeting with uh, Joey over at the uh, Live and I'm here this week, and I'll talk to him a little bit more about it. Yeah. Because uh, I, I used their RFP, I used another RFP that I got, and I kind of combined the two to make more sense for us, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, used our formatting, obviously. But uh, in their RFP, they had um, it kind of organized uh, for um, a property for that is what they did. Uh, and they picked, uh, they piggybacked on the um, North County Recycled Water. Well, that was my ne next question. Could that, in the context of the North County group, could that be one of the preferred projects is to go after money to study? It is. Water. It is. So what the uh, groundwater basin within San Marcos is considered a. Um, uh, there's the near-term projects 2025, and there's the post 2035 projects, 
and the development of the groundwater for conjunctive use. So put recycled water in, take recycled water right. out. It's the only way it seems to make sense. Yeah. And so to me, that makes sense that that's where the money ought yeah. to come from. For. And then the only thing that, that's kind of mentioned is the problem is you have people who are using that water for different things, and now you're putting recycled water in it. If that's their domestic water supply, there's yeah. some issues. Yeah. yeah. It's complicated yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, but I'm wondering. Most of it's using for irrigation. Yeah, exactly. I did, no. Yeah, I was just trying to think of the dozen wells that I know of. Yeah. Nobody's using it for domestic use. Uh, it's all irrigation use. Or yeah. agricultural use. So it should be okay based on that, mm -hmm. but but you still have, well, it's a high salt basin anyway. But right, you still have you're putting higher salt in it potentially. It's it's an impacted basin that has salt, high salt in it. So well, you know, the salt it, management plan might be difficult. You might have to RO it a little bit to just put it in. And it and it's interesting because some of the basin is not high salt. Yeah. The the uh, the two wells, the one on Mission at uh, Diamond. Mm -hmm. He's got a well, and, and Pete Santar over there off of uh, uh, Rancho Santa Fe and whatever the heck the street, La Mirada, he's got a well. And both of those are very low salt content, very good water. I mean, I haven't seen the report, or if I did, I couldn't read it because I didn't know the, uh, the, the TDS. Or TDS. It probably well, tracks where the high high nitrate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But they're claiming you can drink that water. They were they were content. They were contemplating getting a well with enough quality they could process it over at their Palomar water station and use it. I don't think they've done that. But he said, yeah, this is water is is potable water. So, all of that being said breaking the RFP down to incremental pieces is going to be a little more palatable to the board because <laughs> to drop a half a million dollar number on them is just right. gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna throw up on maybe it. more palatable to <coughs> focus on the way to pay for this first yeah, yeah. exactly and, and the minimum amount of engineering that's required to, to do support that. a grant yeah. application exactly yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to me that makes the most sense. yeah at, but I think it, to not waste your efforts that you've already done, if that could be put together in the RFP so that it was an incremental program, so if we ran into a... Well, it'd be a, it'd be a little different consultant, actually, because ah. because the geotech consultant would actually be the sub, uh, just to help set up, the, the hydrogeologist would be the sub to help set up some of the baseline To further develop the feasibility. Exactly, to further develop the feasibility study. It'd be more of a, the kind of like what Scott Goldman's doing with the North County Group or what uh, Don McFarlane with, uh, did with Liberty is setting up the granting, setting up the feasibility study and using a hydrogeologist to help set the boundaries of it uh, so it, it moves forward to try and get some type of grant application going and then right. It's more shepherd in the grant application. Mm -hmm. Those grant efforts you require and kind of shepherding along. Now, uh, my experience with all that is you can get into that at a fairly reasonable price, but there's ongoing costs with those grant applications every quarter, or every year, every you know to kind of make sure you, you're chasing those grants. Make sure it's in front of the right yeah yeah people authority. Right. To exactly. Well, but I can't believe that's a half a million dollar chase. Not right away. No. <laughs> so, well, but if you get some grant money, then you know you're yeah. fueling the right, chase. Right. So it becomes so, incremental. I mean, I would agree with you that we should move the effort to finding money in the RFP, and if that can't be attached to the rest of it, then then that should be the primary move, so that we can figure out how to fund this darn thing short of our monies. Okay, so James, when you meet with uh, Joey, you can try to figure out how, how they pursued yeah. the financial aspect of the, of the study. Yeah, and I, I might actually, uh, I think Joey was, that's the portion he was involved in, and Don oh, McFarland did the rest All of the it. technical. Yeah. Oh, good. So, mm -hmm. so what, and so I'll be able to talk to Joey directly about that and get information okay. as well as they do. And then I'll have more information now, which means the RFP that I've c c currently drafted it, it is except for the base information is really unusable. Yeah. Well, uh, just keep it on the side. No, I will. Yeah, right. It's not, it's, it's not garbage because it will yeah. end up being the future if we could get grant money. It would be the future RFP. So, okay, so just to clarify what I'm, what I'm understanding from the committee is uh, 
go ahead and look at setting on an RFP to get move get a consultant on board to get grant funding for groundwater yep. use, whether it be portable, portable reuse, or, 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 you know, recycled water. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. well, good. Well, that's moving forward. All right, number four, master plan. Okay, so the master plan, uh, we've, I've gotten an update. Um, Rob's not here today, or else he was going to be in here, but uh, so he sent me an email update. So the first thing the board's going to see officially as the master plan is the notice of prep circulation. That will be in mid-October. So uh, just as a reminder, notice of preparation is the first step of CEQA for the environmental. It just states that we're preparing a master plan. We're preparing a supplemental EIR is what we're doing. Uh, there's no document at that point in time yeah. to hand out. There, there's no document to criticize. There's no document to review. It's what we're looking at is, is we send out the letters to all the agencies and to the, the clearinghouse that basically says we're preparing this document. Is there something you want us to consider and address in it? And then we get standard form letters back. So we expect to get letters back from different agencies about, you know, uh, archaeological, you know, anytime you dig, you need an archaeological mire. We usually get that from the, the, the uh, Indian, Indian tribes. Indian tribes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we'll get something yeah. about air quality. We'll get something, you know, you, know, you got to meet AB 32. So we'll, uh, we'll get all the normal letters back, which are standard, and then we usually get a few others. And this is actually, it's a public hearing. Uh, so you'll get um, people, uh, sometimes developers, sometimes uh, people I imagine probably from the northern end of our district they'll come in and start saying where's a document, what about this, what about this, talking about specific projects. Uh, we're not going to be able to address that uh, for the notice of preparation because all it is is we're preparing the document, we're letting the public know that this document is coming out soon. Right. So, and uh, the, the master plan is the one that the attorneys at Golden Door, our, our past master plan, is the document that the attorneys are pointing to that identified no. that we, no. No, they're pointing to the urban water management. Oh. So the, urban, the master plan actually is our guiding document. So um, they'll, they'll probably find some reason to point at that after they see it, but they're looking well, at that. Well, yeah, no, I'm in. And what? What year are we going to call the update? It's going to be called 2016 or 2017. It'll be 2017 at the, at the earliest. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I think that's important yeah. because we get a lot of criticism for yeah, you know, but putting it's, out something that's but it, already out of date. I'm not saying it is out of no, date. It's just the, the perception. perception. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, there's a sentence now that says all land use data, everything is from you know 2000. And, yeah, yeah, you, so. you can put the facts 14, in it, but the, yeah. the title, the title is important yeah. to focus yeah. on. Yeah, it'll be the 2017 or 2018, or whatever okay. date we adopt it. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so it could be the 2018. Sure. Yeah. It won't be adopted until 18. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, so, so uh, let's try and make it that date. Yeah. So James, what's your guess if, if the... Well, that's what I'm going with the okay. regular okay. schedule. So, uh, so we're going to receive the administrative draft of the supplemental EIR. So that's our first chance as staff to look at it. Not, we're going to re receive that in late October. So basically, mid October, we're notifying the public that this draft is coming, this uh, environmental document and the master plan is going to be coming out. So we're writing it late October. It's the first time staff will get to see it. It's the first time our, uh, our environmental lawyer will get to see it. Uh, we're going to circulate the draft to the public review sometime in January. We plan to receive and address comments uh, by March of 2018. And we're looking for board adoption of the master plan and the final supplemental EIR, hopefully by May of 2018. It, it could be it could be April if uh, depending on the comments. Uh, we can't really fight that. Uh, parallel to this, uh, probably let's see where are we? Probably by late October, uh, we're going to be meeting with the BIA because we'll be uh, we'll have the draft numbers for the future. Uh, capital facilities fees for water and sewer. So I've already told uh, the BIA that uh, the new schedule, I sent them an email, I, I cc Glenn on this, uh, and let them know that we'll be meeting with them parallel with draft information. Nothing will be final because we can't final it until we have a final document. But we'll have, so we'll be working parallel so this way they're aware of 
how the master plan and the facilities we're going to construct will be rolled out and how it affects their capital facilities. So those things, will be, and then if we need to, within that time frame, we'll, we'll schedule workshops. Although there hasn't been a pressing need, I think the development community now is a lot more educated on how the process works, so the workshops may not be necessary. You there said that was in late October? Yeah, late October. And uh, I've already emailed Mike. Mike, yeah. Mike emailed okay. me directly. Uh, and then um, along with that, uh, there also will be a board workshop that will be scheduled uh, probably right when the master plan gets circulated. So we'll schedule that, uh, obviously, when we can. And that'll be probably a fairly long workshop. So. So that'd be same late October, early November workshop. And more like January. More like January. Oh. Cir circulation of the. Of the oh. When we circulate the document, we're gonna right around that time we're gonna. Okay. Because at that time we have something that the public could actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. What will we do? What's your recommendation for committee work leading up to that? Well, I'd like to bring, um, basically with the environmental document, I don't, unless there's, an, unless there's a reason to bring it to the committee, I don't anticipate bringing that to the committee for the notice of preparation. There's nothing to read anyway. Right. Um, the admin draft, I don't, I don't foresee bringing that to the committee. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> it's a pretty big document. But prior to the circulation uh, of the actual document to the public, I'd like to bring the that to the committee prior to releasing that to uh, the board and to everybody else uh, for circulation. Okay. So, okay. And then, um, and then from there, if there's a desire by the committee to have another workshop or another meeting prior to maybe the workshop, uh, or maybe after the workshop, after questions uh, from the public come, and there might be some more uh, in-depth review of the document. And what I anticipate is there might be a reason somewhere, somewhere after January, but before March, that uh, the, the board and the committee might want to meet. You know, committee first and then board. So maybe just to address the 800-pound gorilla, a lot of our work does not include Newland Sierra because it's not in any way approved. None of it includes But there's Sierra. this parallel process where Newland Sierra, Sierra is being considered by the board, or the board, county board of supervisors, yep. sorry. So if, the, if they get their approval of that project before our document gets final, how do we... It, it, does, it doesn't matter. It, they, so the way we address uh, any project that gets approved um, that's not approved in our adopted master plan is we basically do a water sewer study or some agencies call it a SAMP, a sub-area master plan, which makes them whole with our master plan. So the water sewer study that was done by Newland Sierra already that's in their environmental document makes them whole with our existing master plan. When we get our new master plan adopted, we'll relook at their water sewer study to make sure that there's no differences. And there's for New and Sierra, there's hardly any. So um, they will, if we need to update that document, we'll update it. Uh, and then basically, if they meet the conditions of the water sewer study, they in essence are now whole with our adopted master plan. So we don't, we won't need to modify our master plan. No, we couldn't do. We'd have to modify it for every little project. Yeah, that's why we do water sewer. Studies. Okay, and that just yeah. brings them. Yep. Yeah, because it's likely that they'll have their final approvals by the county before our before our environmental document is done. And just a heads up, we will get criticism from the public. Why didn't your master plan assume that project? Because it just got approved by the county. But you're right; it'll be that you'll never finish your study. Right, yeah. right. and we, we will have we will be able to say well, we have already studied it. Right, and yeah. it's supplemental work that had been done. That yeah, and in. it's part of our right. existing master and, plan. And, and it's expensive for them. They got to build a lot of sewer infrastructure. They have to build a lot of water infrastructure that they have to build. Yeah. To serve their community. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and it's single source. That developer needs to do it to serve that developers, the, the development itself. Yeah. There's no other outside users that benefit from it. And yeah. that's what makes them whole. And then they have to even upgrade some facilities uh, coming down, uh, the sewer the sewer line coming down Twin Oaks, it will have to get upgraded because the additional sewers were never anticipated. Right. So. Yeah, okay. All right, good. So okay, any, no more questions on the master plan? No. Um, so that I don't forget, because I did not write it down. Um, I think, uh, and other bit, I'll, I'll write it down. Yeah.
here's the schedule. Just in case. Okay. Okay. Some, uh, I've got a question related to it. It's the urban water management plan. <coughs> that, that, that's supposed to be updated every five years. Something. Yeah. And so what's the schedule on that? Is it like 2019 you'll start? Well, it's actually, so the way it works is the wholesale agency has till July 2020. And we can't do ours until, I mean, we do it parallel that. until afterwards. Okay. So we basically have until 2021, July to do it. Or it's, maybe it's December, but the wholesale agency could ask for a six months extension, which right. they have both times now. So, which pushes our okay. extension out. So do we get a year? From theirs or six months from a year. There. So oh, our well, I think six months. I think about I six, six months. months yeah. So is our latest uh, completed or adopted one is that called twenty fifteen? It's called the twenty fifteen. Yeah, even yeah. though it was adopted in sixteen. So you know, we got some criticism from mm -hmm. you know Golden Door on how and how we framed uh, mm -hmm. the adequacy yeah. of water, kind of the figures. Have we resolved? Yes. How we show those numbers? Yes, we resolved the issue. We're not going to go back and amend the document right. because it opens us up to legal issues. Right. Oh. We, we think it's a non-issue. So but going forward, going forward, my recommendation is we be more conformist to how the other agencies yeah, are doing. That was my concern. No fun being the one out there standing alone. Yeah. Also, the new master plan, uh, the one, the draft master plan, addresses the uh, foundational issue that ended up being pointed out in the urban water master. Because the the growth curve of the growth is, and conser existing conservation yeah. or historic conservation that was kind of what we got criticized on yeah. how exactly. we showed that how exactly. we showed it. exactly so the, the the growth was front loaded by sandbag in the previous master plan and now we've moderated the growth out to more realistic assumptions uh, the new sandbag uh, projections are more realistic and then we've even moderated it more based on what we see. Uh, using the sandbag information and the, the variances that you're allowed to use within sandbag. Um, so with that, you can see instead of all the, all the uses, all the water uses being front loaded, now it's being pushed back, which makes your conservation numbers look better also, where you could show the pre-conservation number and then now showing the post-conservation number, there's not a 30% difference because of the, the way it's loaded up. Okay. So what, what happened in our existing urban water management plan is you had a front-loaded number that was a calculated number and then an actual use number. And then when you look at the front-loaded calculated number versus actual use, there's a 40% reduction or something, a big, large reduction, whatever that percentage was, which sounds unachievable, but exactly. we're achieving it because yeah. one number is a calculated number and the other one's an actual number. Yeah. It, just, it just begged a lot of questions. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, but that's very hard to explain to yeah. a room full of people. So. Yeah, they don't care. Particularly people that don't want to hear the answer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so the last item on the agenda, if we just labeled it the freeway sewer easement. All right. Conversations, conversations I've had with Director Hernandez, he has expressed some concerns about whether the district could help the city of San Marcos with some downtown flooding issues they have. So, Director Hernandez, if you don't mind, let me turn it over to you and you can explain. Okay. So, um, San Marcos Boulevard, cutting Easy across ride. there, you can see where the creek is. From uh, Bent, which is right there, to where the bowling alley is, which I can't remember, is that? Uh, which one is that? Right there? The, that area right there is the flood way, and it's taken out of the creek district completely because they can't build in it. Or if they, they're trying to figure out a solution as to how they can build in, you know, do they raise it up, put parking on the bottom, put all the shops and everything above it. And it's all because the connection under the freeway is, was designed too small. Right, yeah, the, where the, the creek bridge. crosses the right. freeway. The bridge across the creek. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't know if it's the connect. I, I thought the connection was further up. It's it's right here. It's, uh, I'm yeah. actually very familiar with the. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. You're right there. Yeah, that's yeah. that's it. So that's too small. So the water backs up, then it flows around, then it splits under the freeway. Part of it goes up uh, to the west, and the rest goes down to the or north and it's south, and it floods that area. So I'm thinking in my mind because when I first got on the board, we had that big 
interceptor. Uh, interceptor that went underneath and they poured underneath it and I went, wow, could we become the heroes of the whole city? Because that's, that's probably 15% of the whole area uh, that is being underutilized and causing all kinds of grief. And um, I said, you know, geez, is there any chance in God's green earth that we could share our easement with the city and yet it yet it and do something to get that water under the, the freeway. So I asked Glenn and he said he'd look into it and so here we are. So, okay. so I got no idea what I'm even talking about other than, you know, so you guys, we went under the freeway. Is there any room for anybody else to go under so, the freeway? So uh, a few a few things. I've, I've been part of the, the Creek uh, interagency meeting, so I'm very familiar with their their low marn or and their flood floodplain uh, management and, and changing the flood zone mm -hmm. flood, flood plain maps uh, the process but, uh, and what I I was guessing this is the area so I printed out this map because our GIS is down right now because we upgraded to the latest version of SQL Server so mm -hmm. everything is not working <laughs> so um, and you can see the uh, 27 inch uh, clay line which is the BCP. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, the flow type, the 36 inch, that's a new one. And the 27 inch is the old one, and you can see how we have it connected in. Uh, obviously, the old one we set higher, so if, that, if we ever back up on the 36 inch because of an obstruction, it'll automatically use the 27. Now, that being said, we don't have easements for any of these. We're under here under Caltrans permit. So it's not an easement, it's a Caltrans permit. Uh, so we don't have the rights to use it for anything but what we use it for. Uh, and if the city were to need to use it, they'd have to get a separate permit. They can't just take over our permit. Caltrans wouldn't allow that type of use. Uh. Uh, and, and it is, although it's not utilized, you can see it is a safety system for us. Because mm -hmm. uh, this is basically all of the San Marcos sewers uh, from the north that, that come into this area. And we've had uh, just uh, a year and a half ago, somebody stuffed a whole couch cushion down right over just uh, I'll show you what they did actually. Just uh, not this winter, luckily, but the winter before, right off of Johnston, right here. Yeah. Somebody, whoops, I'm sitting too far up. Come on. Somebody stuffed a couch cushion, a full size couch cushion, down into our sewer. And it got carried all the way down through that thing, but it could have easily stopped and clogged something. So uh, the other portion to talk about is the amount that our 27-inch line could carry as far as stormwater is a drop in the bucket. Yeah, no, no, they're yeah. talking 48-inch, two 48-inch. Yeah. And I, yeah. I didn't understand the permit. I thought it was like our standard, you know, we got a 20-foot easement, yeah, no. and uh, we're using 27 inches of it. Uh, so... Okay. Yeah, if we had a 20 foot easement, they get the two, they get yeah, a they couple can pipes do in there. Something yeah. under that. So, but they, yeah, they, they need a full bridge or box culvert basically to, to do that. Because, you know, even though that creek doesn't flow that much when it rains, it's a significant yeah, it, amount of water. Oh, uh, yeah, it really does. Are these, are these two pipelines inside like a conductor casing? Yeah, or? yeah. So we have a 54 inch casing that's, that's obviously got a sand fill, sand slurry fill. So that pipe could physically be. Pulled out, just yeah. a carrier pipe. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then the other one, the 27 inch, I think it's a 36 inch casing. Uh, it's a steel casing, and mm -hmm. uh, we don't know the condition of it, but we did as far as when we put in the 36 inch, we had the 27 inch uh, cleaned out professionally uh, by the contractor and videoed, and it's in good shape. Yeah. So, but we did find rocks about this big inside of it. Really? Yeah, we had a we had a leak uh, just actually around the same area behind Johnson uh -huh. were uh, it was before my time so 15 plus years ago uh, our, our staff that was here said they went out there and it was in the middle of a rainstorm and they just saw a big whirlpool in the middle of the, the creek and we, we sucked in huge boulders mm. and uh, obviously the, the top of the top of the pipe cracked open so but yeah so unfortunately um, we don't have an easement and yeah. we in, in order, order room and, and, the, and, and the getting the permit, I, uh, that's what they're saying. It's just yeah. 
difficult. Yeah, but for them, it's, it's it's huge. It's basically they need to they need to put another bridge in. I mean, they need yeah, they, they need, need something. Yeah, they, yeah. Well, so, I didn't. Un, I figured it was a shot in the dark. And, yeah. Okay. But, but for <coughs> for Director Elta, Director Hernandez is exactly right. For, so the floodwaters, basically, I just lost myself. Here, right there. The floodwaters basically come down. They, they back up because this is a pinch point. They come down the off ramp, go down San Marcos Boulevard, and then cut across and these it. lots to get back into the creek. Yeah, part of it does go uh, to the west, to, yeah. to the north, so where like direction that is. Have a project it goes to fix their, it. Yeah, their creek project, their creek district project, which, yeah. which starts right here. And, and includes the new br bridge right. at Craven slash Bant and at Via Veracruz. Mm -hmm. uh, Via Veracruz becomes a new pinch point, and basically a flood wall over here and uh, an embankment about, two, they're going to be putting about, in areas, 8 to 12 feet yep. uh, of fill on top of our, our existing easement. Yeah. Um, and so now our interceptor will be 20, 24 feet deep. So, but do they anticipate putting more carrying capacity at that point so right that there. that's a caltrans shop that they're working yeah. on they're, uh, but that one's way out in the future so there's going to be yeah when they when they do this they're literally going to build this there's going to be a temporary floodway that's been going that's to be a, cut in okay. here that yeah. might be there for 10 to 20 and, years until this gets yeah fixed. Until that gets fixed. yeah because hmm. you can't you need to relieve that pinch point but once you leave that pitch point, then Via Veracruz becomes a new pitch point. Yep. Once you leave that, then uh, Discovery becomes a new pinch point. But yeah. that's the county, so they. So James, have they mapped the floodway, assuming that the pinch point at the freeway is cleared? Yeah. <laughs> cleared or yeah. yes. So they, if they, they were able to get it all under the freeway, mm. do they know what the floodway looks what like? Yes. What they've shown. That's their Lomar Clomar. <clears throat> okay, I thought they did the Lomar based on the obstruction. They, they, they did both. They did both. They did both. They did the, the, the midterm project, so they know what it's going to look like when they build the creek. Because now that they're developing the creek, but they still have a pinch point, they had to do the new FEMA map. Right. So this way they could do the insurancing on it yeah. uh, and everything else that has to do with that. Uh, and then they did the final uh, to say, okay, it will be relieved. But, it, but that final may or may not ever, I mean, the final may or may not ever happen. Yeah, <laughs> the so, city doesn't have the money. Caltrans doesn't have the money. Caltrans doesn't care about it, and and unless it, and I we can't at least the creek committee cannot see. And I'm not on the committee. I'm yeah. a bystander these days. They can't see a developer coming in and spending millions, yeah. tens of millions, to do that. So, what, they, what about discovery? Is that ever going to be? Through. Yeah, they actually are. We are already in plans. We we are. Yeah. Uh, they're going to make this four lanes. You can see they've already cleared it to right. here. So they're going to make this four lanes. And what they've done is, <laughs> the discovery is now going to rise uh, eight to twelve feet here, to get eight to twelve that, feet here to get the creek under. Yeah, and then there'll be a flood wall right here yeah. going across here. So it theoretically, when at max flood period, these people will be underwater. Except for the flood yeah, wall, the, keeping it back. Uh, mobile home park there. Yep. yep. So what happens? So does uh, Discovery continue to the east, or does it just continue on to Crate in the way? No. So it, it continues here, but then it gets back to um, it gets back to it. it so it'll feather down somewhere in this area to yeah. existing no, elevation. I mean, on, on the east side. Oh, sorry. It'll, it'll tie into. Yes. Barham. So there's a offset intersection that kind of goes like this. And then it'll tie in, and then it'll go, in, and then the road will curve around this way, and it'll be part of the University uh, District East development, mm -hmm. uh, which is all this portion here. Uh, that's the Fenton property, though. The Fenton's developing this one. Fenton just came in. Okay. They just came in. So it'll, it'll tie in at the edge of the time shopping center there. Yeah. No, uh, oh. they the city is allowed Fenton not to build the bridge. There'll okay, be, so, so there'll be no road right here. But Discovery will, or will curve down. It will curve down and, oh, sorry, it'll tie yeah, back into here, yes. Exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, it'll tie back, but I thought you meant here, the shopping center. Originally, Discovery was supposed to go here, and there's supposed to be a bridge We're here. We're not going to extend Grand Avenue. Oh. Fenton. 
Yeah, basically, <coughs> I don't know the real reason, but Fenton said they couldn't afford it, and some and something at the city said okay. Okay, and then the next road I think is that, is that Echo. Echo. Now? Yep. Now will that go through? To you know, Echo is developed down yep. there with the, in the housing tract. Yeah. So uh, the, I haven't seen all the new roads, but there's a the road. It still may be called Echo. I don't know, but the road layout's completed. It's curved roads with uh, you know uh, condominiums mainly. Yeah, so if you go, so down, go to the south, if you bit. go down that road right there yeah. is Echo Lane, and it it stops right yeah, there. Yeah, I think it's going to yeah, all tie in. So so it, Echo will extend yeah. north to tie into the extension. Of but the it's Discovery. it's all different. All the roads are curved now. Right. It's yeah. no longer straight, straight grid. Yeah. yeah. So and 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 to be honest, uh, the University District developer is in for a specific plan amendment to the existing specific plan amendment. So I don't really know what is going to happen after that. So, so, so at the North City, with all the grading yeah. in there, do you know what's do Do we know what's going in there? Mm -hmm. Is it big retail? Or? Well, I mean, there's you know you got the you got you got the uh, urge. There's right. another one, uh, another brew, uh, brew house or Re Republic Brew House or something like that going in. Uh, there's. Um, we don't know what I don't know what's going in that's what F, F at this point. That's no, what I was curious. About. It's more. It looks like it's more retail with with. Uh, so I had heard top. Target at one point, but uh, they were trying to get big box in. Uh, uh, you know, there was an like, there's supposed to be a big movie theater and then a big IKEA over here at yeah, one point, but yeah. those two are gone. So mm -hmm. I don't know what else is coming in at this point. So because they they still have this development that they're gonna have supposedly. Uh, uh, developer oh, it's to the that, hotel. That's a new hotel. Right? Yeah, it's a new hotel. Some, some and there's a bunch of condos. Yeah, these are just, all these are all condos yeah. right here. Yep. It's like 220 yep. condos. These are all condos, but over here, there, there's this commercial slash. It's commercial. Right? And, and what street is that right above it? That's San Oaks. Oh. Twin Oaks. This oh, yeah. is corner Twin Oaks. Corner Twin Oaks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a new hotel right here. So. Yep. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, Outback Steakhouse is going to be. That's right. Outback Steakhouse is going to be one of the ones over yeah. there. Yeah, by, by the hotel. Pardon? By yeah. the hotel. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be. And then gonna, they got a sign out there about retail. Yeah. I don't know how big. But but it's yeah. either going to be this corner unit or the one next to it. I don't yeah. know which one it's going to be. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another lunch place. Yeah. <laughs> More food options. Yeah. So And then, of course, as you guys probably know, uh, just, just so you know what's going on in development here, um, let's see, where's restaurant? Oh, and That's down. it right there. Acapulco. I yeah, this. so yeah. Um, basically they're going to build a new building back here. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, and like two stories tall building back here. And so make a bad parking situation even worse. worse. Yeah. 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 That's and then this. Uh, the Sears thing? That's the Sears building. Sears right there. Right there. That. Yeah, so now that one's going to be apartments. Yeah. So this will be apartments right mm -hmm. there. And that's the movie theater. And across the street is the big, uh, that whole development there is 600 units around the gas station. Right here, yeah. Yep. The, mm -hmm. yeah that whole thing. That's, yeah, exactly. The, uh, yep. 600 the, units in there? 600 used units. Used to be eight, it used to be 840. The departments. Or, apartments and um, yeah, 60,000 feet of commercial. I hated driving San Marcos Boulevard before. Yeah. I really, really and didn't know. Dean yeah. and I tried to get a one-way street, turn San Marcos one way that way, and yeah. Move Discovery and make it the other way, one way the other way, and then tie up at the bridge. You're still part of that, or? Yeah, I'm a I'm a public member now because yeah. of that connection. I had a connection so with that still owner. A possibility. Pardon? Is there still a possible? No. And they don't like it. No. It's probably the volume of traffic. So but they they re they reduced the uh, number of commercial by. It was over a million square feet. Now yep. it's a couple hundred thousand. But they add more housing. And actually, I think they less that. I think we're twenty three hundred now. It was twenty five. Oh, for the Creek District. Yeah. 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 So they, they, they add more housing in the University. District. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they. Because there's yeah, a million. There's, there's a, million a little bit feet. of competition, and some of us are a little bit angry because the city is involved with the pick, pick district. Yeah, they're partners of that. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right. I think that was the end of the agenda. I guess I'll just uh, but uh, the, the item was, that I didn't forget was uh, a 
like to schedule another engineering committee next month to get an update on the, at least the, the top three locker, solar, and groundwater. Okay. And uh, whatever else we got on the agenda. So we can figure out when. Would, and, uh, would the committee like to hear development updates? Like, kind of like what we're talking about. Yeah, now, that would be helpful. Yes, yeah, so it would yeah. be. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah, I could bring Robin for that because he, he's more up to date on it than I am. So okay. he, he could answer specific questions. Perfect timing. Okay, so the first three mainly and then anything else? Yeah, anything else that comes up. Yep. And, uh, and uh, development update. Development. Yes. And, and Glenn, I, not, not part of the meeting, but I, I'm going to have that uh, kind of uh, uh, dashboard information on what's in planning okay, for good. potential use. I, yeah. I have it all drafted up already. Right. I'll show you today, probably. We kind of adjourned. We are done. Okay. We are adjourned.